Hi, I'm wearing a Celine Sciamma shirt today so I can remind myself that good movies still exist. So I've been asked by a shocking number of people to cover this movie because no one wants me to be happy. So please like the video. I'm sure it's not getting monetized, so that would at least be some kind of compensation prize. So it should be no shocker that we're talking about 365 days, which Netflix promoted a shocking amount on my homepage considering the subject matter. Like we've talked about Fifty Shades basically being porn, but like this was pretty much porn. And in general, this entire movie just felt like a really amped up Fifty Shades of Grey. Some people are even claiming that it's the Fifty Shades movie that they always wanted, praising it for its daring sex scenes. It's more daring sex scenes than the entire Fifty Shades trilogy. And others believe that this actually gives Fifty Shades a chance to not be seen as such a toxic disaster of a franchise. So the movie itself is actually based on a trilogy of books written by a Polish woman whose name I'm sure I'm going to butcher here, but it's Blanka Lipinska, who was not shockingly at all inspired by Fifty Shades of Grey when writing this trilogy of books. It's also been heavily associated with Wattpad story tropes, and there's actually translated versions of these novels on Wattpad. So basically what I'm saying is it just has a bunch of fan fiction tropes. So anyways, let's get into this story. It starts in the Mediterranean. These mobster gangster guys are having this big old conversation. This younger guy is spying on a girl who's on the beach. And then we get this poetic line of women are heaven for the eyes, hell for the soul, and then he chimes in with, and purgatory for the wallet. So then they have this nice Lion King moment where dad's like, you know, one day all of this gangster empire will be yours. And then he gets shot. It's like suddenly there's just blood all over the young dude's face. And then it turns out that the bullet went like through his dad and hit him too. So then he thinks he's dying and we get this really dramatic orchestral music starting to play, but I don't feel anything because I don't know or care about any of these characters. But before we can, you know, dilly dally or dwindle there too long, the music flourishes into one of those, you know, very poppy songs that tends to accompany uh, these types of movies and I found out that uh, it was actually a song written and performed by the male lead. And I guess there's actually multiple songs by him in this movie because isn't that just convenient that you can market your own album on this crazy movie that you're in. Uh, I guess in a way it's a little bit like Twilight in that regard because there's actually a bunch of songs by Robert Pattinson in the first Twilight movie. He didn't use it to release an album but hey man take advantage of every opportunity you can. Dude lucked out and got one step above a porno, so he's got to really work to keep going up. So much like Fifty Shades of Grey, our lead is a man of international business, except that international business is largely drugs and other gangster things, like nightclubs. After he does this weird thing where he's like bullying people in an office and seeming all lonely, it cuts to the girl that he had been spying at on the beach, getting home after a hard day, tries making a move on her man who's like, now nah, we're leaving in the morning and you have a heart condition and you probably haven't packed for us yet. You don't have to be in the mood to get to it all the time. You're allowed to say no, even as a guy. But if you are with someone who's like, you haven't packed for us, kick that man, child, woman, child, to the curb. That's okay, she just takes care of herself, which uh, makes me think this would have been a really great time to have a sponsor that dealt in these tools. But alas, we do not. So it cuts back to our leading man on a plane. It's been about five years since the shooting happened and uh, he's kind of informed that somebody stole the entire shipping container of Coke. So he's so frustrated that he pulls these very thin airplane curtains. And in his frustration, he starts manhandling the flight attendant who just goes along with it. And is like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a, a little blowy here. And then shit gets oddly graphic. It got, it got unusually graphic. See, I, I assumed that they were able to get away with this kind of stuff because it didn't play in theaters, but I guess it did in Poland and then in a few other places internationally before hitting Netflix. But I just imagine that E.L. James must be super jealous because I guess that like sex scenes in those movies were a big point of contention with her and the directors because she just wanted more. Either way, I almost puked watching the scene and I've never found myself wishing to be watching Fifty Shades instead of something but you know, here, here we are. So it's the horny chick's birthday and they visit Sicily and somebody has bought her her favorite fancy alcohol and the boyfriend's like, eh, it's not, it wasn't me. And then she goes to use the bathroom and then like surprise business moguls there. Are you lost baby girl? 
Uh, she obviously doesn't know who he is, so she just turns back around and then he's gone. He just Houdini'd. And then the next day is actually officially her birthday and her boyfriend had like abandoned her for most of the day and went on this walk to a location to see something that they were supposed to do together. So she's super pissed off, pushes him in the pool. There's like a montage of her being upset before she gets like cornered in an alley and then it just fades to black and she wakes up the next morning in a room that she doesn't recognize. <laughs> so she tries to leave the room and it's locked. And then hours later, like, I mean, she had clearly woken up in the morning and then it's dark by the time the door is just mysteriously unlocked. So she tries to run out before she comes across this massive portrait of herself on the wall and then dude's behind her again. And here we get this. Are you lost baby girl? Every time he says baby girl, I die a little inside. So he basically reveals that he has kidnapped her because he wants her to fall in love with him. And the reason why he did it was because he thought he was dying in that moment and her face was the last one he kept seeing when he was bleeding out because he was obviously just stalking her on the beach with the binoculars. So he's been obsessed with her for five years and just happened to see her at the airport and immediately dropped his plans and concocted this insane kidnapping thing and he must now have her. So she's obviously like, nobody owns me. I'm not an object. But then he's like, no, no, of course not. I'm just giving you a chance to fall in love with me in a completely organic way, totally against your will. So it's a motivation when she's like, I have a boyfriend, he's not the best, but whatever. He's like, yeah, he's way not just not the best. Here's some pictures of him with his uh, business stuck in someone else's hoo-ha. And like, yeah, there's no doubting that guy sucked ass, but we are not going to romanticize the kidnapper. We're just not doing that. And he's already said a couple times that he won't do anything she doesn't want to or touch her when she doesn't want to be touched, but he's kind of saying a lot of this stuff while he has her pinned against the wall with his hand on her breast assist. Like you are literally doing something against her will right now while you're saying you won't do that exact thing. No, we need to stop this. We need to stop making any of this okay. This it's it's done. We're done. We've We've explored this enough. This is, none of this is okay. Like, how do I live in a world where I'm watching something that makes Christian Grey look like a normal and adjusted, healthy individual? And even though he's saying that everything's gonna be in her control and her power, he says some stuff about tying her up and not being nice about it. I'm just, oh my God. But I guess he just kind of likes to do that in general because it cuts the scene to this guy who's strapped up to this cement thing. And apparently it's because he's the one who stole all the drugs from him, but he also found out that this guy was like selling kids to a brothel. So again, they're trying to make him like sympathetic in some way. It's like, oh, you know, he's a criminal. He's a gangster. He deals drugs. He's probably been involved with killing people. He's literally kidnapped this woman, but he killed the guy who was selling children to a brothel. So really stand up individual. You're lucky he found you. So either way, she somehow manages to make it outside. And when she's trying to escape, she like stumbles upon them when they're assassinating this guy or killing this guy. And she passes out because apparently she has a heart condition. It's been mentioned three times at this point. So I'm assuming that's foreshadowing for something. He also has a pretty big temper, one that's even worse than Christian. So she's again like, I'm not going anywhere with you when he's like, we need to leave Sicily tomorrow. And he pushes her on the bed and then she slaps him because, you know, some grown man just slammed you on a bed and he threatens her with more violence. Take no people. This is how you start healthy relationships. But either way, he gets her out of the house and she's just kind of like smirking and she drags him around and makes him buy a bunch of crap. But then when she's trying on fancy lingerie, he walks in the room and she's like, get out or I guarantee you, you'll never see any of this again. And then he grabs her by the neck, pushes her against the wall and says, I order it and I'm gonna take it when I want. Ah! So she tries to run and the cops are like, oh yeah, we see that guy behind you and they just walk away. So the cops in this entire location are apparently in this dude's pocket. And again, we get... Are you lost, baby girl? And then he delivers just my favorite line of sometimes fighting is futile you have to accept the situation the faster the better for you now that is right out of the christian gray handbook and then he says the words i'm not the monster you think i am <laughs> it wasn't an offer it was an order Roll. Look, you can say whatever you want, psycho, but you're still a psycho. So they're eating and he gets a text from this woman named Anna. Wonder where they got that name. And this chick's clearly into him. She's like, why are you not replying? I'm not giving up. So we're like, oh man, we got a scorned ex lover here. That's also like 50 shades. But at this point, he's kind enough to give her back her phone and her laptop, which she's been asking for. And she immediately calls her mom. And I'm like, wow. 
that was so easy. But then she's like, uh, hey, mom, I was offered a new job in Sicily for a year contract. So I'm going to be here for a while. Ha <laughs> ha, Stockholm syndrome. So she goes to sleep and then wakes up and he's like right there next to her. So she goes to have a shower, but the showers are like completely open. So he goes and gets in the shower that's right next. And I just saw a limp dick. I thought seeing Christian Grey's pubes were bad enough and I'm not prude, but no, I just, I don't need, I didn't need to see that. And then he delivers just what has to be the greatest line in modern cinema. Why are you looking at it? Do you want to touch it? I hate all of this just so much. So he like moves over to her personal space. And like this man literally had her by the throat yesterday. And he just did it again right now when she tried to walk away from him. And again, we get, this. When your entire life is based on taking everything with force, don't provoke me. But don't worry, he's not gonna do anything without her consent, but don't provoke him. I'm not the monster you think I am. So he forces her on a plane and they actually have to strap her to a seat because she doesn't want to go so intensely. Like, yeah, definitely not gonna do anything against her will except every single second they're on screen together. And again, he immediately starts manhandling her breasts, puts his hands down her pants, even though, even though he said he wouldn't touch her, without permission and then has the audacity to pull the you have to earn the pleasure. I hate this. And honestly, what is it with these movies ruining ice cream? I swear to God, there always has to be some weird, overly sexualized ice cream scene in these movies and I'm just, I'm sick of it. I get it. Dairy isn't good for you, but this isn't the way. So then it cuts to them in a bedroom and as much as I don't want to see the nudity, I'm at least happy that they're not doing the typical American thing where they're fine showing an entire female body but won't show anything of a man. I'm sure there are a lot of women out there who want to see a little bit of wang and dude butt. I'm not one of them, but it that's what you're into, congratulations, here's the movie for you. So again, this dude is basically forcing himself on her. He straps her up from her arms and her feet to this bed and has like a spreader bar that spreads and locks the more you struggle. And that she's facing directly at a massive painting of himself petting a lion. And then he again says that he'll do anything he wants with her. I'm not the monster you think I am. And then somehow there's just this random chick here and he's like, I'm gonna show you what you're missing. And I assumed he was gonna sleep with this chick in front of her, but no, he's gonna show her what she's missing by making this other girl suck his. <laughs> I want to throw up. What was that supposed to show? Like, oh man, if you were more will willing to play a ball, that could have been your mouth on mine. <laughs> so she basically just had to watch another woman fillet him with a massive painting of himself as the backdrop. So either way, he gets on top of her again and realizes that she's just not down to ask for it. So he lets her go and is all like, we're going to a club, so get yourself ready. Cause that's exactly where I wanna go after a spectacle like that is to the club. So she puts on this skimpy little number and he's really upset about it. And you know, she's basically implying that once he gets the yes one time, he'll do anything he wants with her whenever. So we joke here, but I do feel the need to clarify that that's not how consent works. At any time you can retract consent if you want a situation to stop. And saying yes to one thing is not saying yes to everything. Respect yourselves, respect your partners, and be safe. Anyway, she starts flirting with a bunch of other people at this club just to piss him off more. And of course it creates a scenario where another guy that she was dancing near tries to force himself on her. So Psycho Stalker shoots the guy in the hand and it turns out that he was in a rival family because isn't that always the way it works? And then she apologizes because he's mad, but then he's still slut shames her for the clothing she was wearing, basically saying it was her fault that someone else tried to assault her because who says romance is dead? Then they fight, she falls into the ocean, he jumps in and brings her out. Then she's suddenly like, oh my God, you saved me. And even though he still really sucks, she really sucks his I'm just gonna say it. There's entirely too much dick sucking in this movie. I feel like there has to be actual real porn out there that has a better story than this. But yeah, they get to it. And again, I'm sure E.L. James is just green with envy at what this movie has been able to do. And I'm, 
green, green with nausea because this turns into a fucktage around the boat. I've literally taken three breaks while watching this movie. I started it last night. So it progresses on again, like Fifty Shades, there's a masquerade scene. For some reason, Psycho doesn't wear a mask and I don't know, I guess he's too cool or something. But oh my God, guys, I think she might be falling in love with him. How romantic. And then of course the Anna chick that had been messaging him shows up and is like, I'm the first and real love of this psycho boy because she's psycho girl. It's great. It's like a match made in heaven. And then she threatens to kill Laura. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. The girl's name is Laura. I've just been calling her Stockholm Sally in my head. We're gonna keep doing that. So yeah, threatens to kill her and take everything important away from him. And we find out that he had actually left her the day he realized that this chick landed in Sicily. And for some reason, this other, this Anna girl had stuck around, even though he's apparently had portraits of this woman all around his house for the past five years while trying to find her. I think all these women need a swift lesson in something called self-respect. Before we can dwell on the murder threats too much, they're on a one-way train to Boomtown once again. There is, there's just no way this is staying monetized. You know, I'm, tr I'm trying so hard. So then he's suddenly like, you're going back to Poland because he's clearly worried that something's gonna happen to her. So she gets back to Poland and her friend's like, oh my God, where have you been? I thought you were kidnapped. But then she's like, haha, no, just fell in love because Martin pissed me off. So then they sit around having gal chats about Psycho and she delivers this the greatest line in which she says when you're with him you feel like a little girl and he makes all your sexual fantasies come true there are a lot of things that i just never want associated with each other and those two things are at the top of that list then her friend finally gets through to her being like what the hell is going on and she just immediately dumps out like i was kidnapped by a gangster and i fell in love with him you know tale as old as time. So they go on a pamper spa day and then they decide to go to the club and she got her hair cut and blondified and so now no one will ever recognize her. And when they're at the club, this other guy with a stupid haircut hits up her best friend so she's left alone for two seconds and somehow her ex-boyfriend's there and like, oh my God. Guys, he managed to recognize her even with this crazy new disguise. I'm shook. And he's like, oh my God, it took you walking away to realize that I actually do love you even though I was sleeping with someone else. So she's not having it and she goes to leave. But then of course he runs into the elevator after her because she didn't hit the close elevator button. You always hit the close elevator button. And then he follows her home. And you never open the door to your place if someone who is not taking no for an answer is following you home and they're like right behind you. Also, you call the cops when somebody continues to follow you home against your will. So they get into a fight and of course, Massey Psycho is already in the room. He's like, I can't understand a damn thing you're saying, but I think she's made it pretty clear that she doesn't want you around. So she's mad that he had sent her back to Poland and didn't get in touch, but it's all good because he's like, I don't need 365 days because I already love you. He asks her to marry him. And she says, yes, it's been two months. It, it is just like 50 shades of gray. Oh my God. So then they go shopping. Again, there are two lavish shopping trips in this singular movie. That's how little story they're actually putting into it. This movie could have been a tight hour and a half of misery with ease. So they're planning the wedding and she's like, I know that nobody uh, from Poland can come because you don't want them to know what you do because for some reason that would come up at a wedding, but I need my best friend there. She already knows everything. And thankfully the best friend is like, you're an idiot. You've known each other for two months. Is he forcing you into this? What the hell is wrong with you? Are you pregnant and it turns out she is pregnant. He doesn't know that, but we go wrap it up kids. So they get the dress and her and her friend are driving through this crazy mountain headed back to his place. This other mobster dude gets a call from someone that's like, they're going to kill Laura now. So he speeds up. He's trying to call Massimo, who's the psycho, but because he's on the phone with Stockholm, he can't get through to tell him because apparently the gangsters aren't rich enough for, you know, call waiting. So then, Stockholm Sally's SUV enters a tunnel and it doesn't come out the other side. And then it pans back to cops blocking off the tunnel and that's it. Fade to white, movie over. What did I just watch? Like I assumed that her heart condition was going to be the foreshadowing that led to her death or something, but like she still apparently died, but it's still not because of that. Like this, this is so dumb. Good job, Psycho, you got her killed because you got pissed off and shot some gangster hands and you had an ex-lover and rival family 
drama and all the, uh, the goodies. And thanks to Wikipedia, I know that they have a sequel plan. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a trilogy of books, so maybe this chick isn't dead after all. Like, did they get orders to kill a brunette, so then they just killed the friend and left the other two people in the car alone? I don't know, and I don't want to know, but I'm sure... Eventually, I'm gonna have to find out. Right now, the movie is delayed in production due to the pandemic. I'm not reading the books. They're also Polish, so I think I'm safe for now. So in conclusion, this is like the plot of all three Fifty Shades put into one movie. We've got a crazy ex, the abusive behavior, a touch of bad BDSM portrayals, controlling behavior amped up to kidnapping, horrible sex, a sassy best friend, stalking. It's saturated with songs instead of score, marriage, babies, and murder. All the goodies. I want to puke three times. Coincidentally, that is the same number of times that there was knob to mouth scenes. I'm gonna go cry now. Anyways, that is going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Have you watched this movie? What did you think of it? I know a lot of people were having it promoted to them on Netflix when it dropped. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like the video if you're into that kind of thing. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.